When it comes to Pokemon conspiracies here at Frederator, we've just gotta catch them all. In the original Pokemon animated series, Ash Ketchum and Pikachu are the best of friends. But is it possible that Ash's Pikachu isn't his original Pikachu? In the very first episode of the Pokemon show, Ash Ketchum is given his very first Pokemon, a very reluctant and stubborn Pikachu. This Pikachu actually rejects Ash completely. He doesn't listen to him, he's aggressive, and actually tries to electrocute Ash every time he tries to control him. In the show, this typically means that the Pokemon's level is above the trainer's badges. This is actually made canon in the show when Charizard reaches a higher level and begins to disobey Ash. So so why was Pikachu disobeying Ash at the beginning? It could be that that Pikachu was already at a higher level. And this actually starts to make sense if you look at the Spearow fight in the first episode. Pikachu uses a powerful electric attack that wipes out an entire flock of Spearow in one move. This move implies that Pikachu already knows how to use Thunderbolt or Thunder, which are higher level moves. So where did this adorable Pikachu that we all know as Ash's best friend come from? if he's a total dick in the first episode. In the second episode of the show, Pokemon Emergency, Pikachu is brought to the Viridian City Pokemon Center to be healed. Team Rocket crashes through the roof of the Pokemon Center, as they usually do, and attempts to wreak havoc. To fend them off, Ash's sick Pikachu jumps in some sort of doggy pile of other Pikachus in an attempt to charge up together and defeat Team Rocket. Pikachu returns from the group, perfectly healed and ready to fight with Ash. The the only indication it's the same Pikachu is the contraption on its head and the willingness to cooperate with Ash. After the Pokemon Center battle, Pikachu has a completely different personality. He's friendly, eager to battle, and totally loves Ash. Basically how any Pokemon should act when raised by a trainer. Also in the first episode of the show, the Pokedex said that wild Pokemon are jealous of trained Pokemon owned by a trainer. So maybe it's possible that one of the Pikachus from the center that was only used as a power source, had the motivation to switch places with Ash's original unmotivated Pikachu, who is really just more interested in being left alone. In the rest of the show, Pikachu notably rejects going into his own Pokeball, ever, even when he's at the point of near death. It could be stubbornness, but it could also be because that is the original Pikachu's Pokeball. Every Pokeball is coded to a specific Pokemon. So maybe it's that Pikachu isn't just rejecting its Pokeball, it's actually just incapable of entering entering that Pokeball because it belongs to a different Pikachu, Ash's original Pikachu. So what if Pikachu didn't just have a complete 180 personality change, and he's actually just a regular Pokemon who took the opportunity to journey alongside a trainer as it's always dreamed? I am far from being a Pokemon expert. But I think this theory brings up some really interesting points. In the first episode, Professor Oak warns Ash that this Pikachu has some problems, like a personality defect. But of course, Ash doesn't listen and takes him anyway. So what about Pikachu's total personality switch? Could it be that it's an entirely new Pikachu? Or is it just that Pikachu OG was so moved by Ash trying to save him that he decided to change his ways? Is it possible that in all the confusion, with a multitude of seemingly identical Pikachus getting mixed together in a skirmish, that Ash unknowingly took the wrong Pikachu when he left? When you take his new Pokemon's attitude adjustment into consideration, he probably chalked it up as good karma for saving the day and kind of just went with it. All the while, his jerkwad starter might still be toiling away in a hospital, generating energy in a very cruel twist of fate. Serves him right if he didn't want to be in Ash's squad. Honestly guys, this theory could go either way. It's up to you guys as Pokemon fans to choose what you believe. But as for me, I'm giving this theory three and a half Pokeballs out of five. In the comments, let me know what you guys thought of this conspiracy and if you agree or disagree with how I rated it. Subscribe to Channel Frederator and I'll see you guys next week. In Disney movies, it's all about good versus evil. Where good prevails and evil gets fed to a bunch of hyenas or dramatically dropped off a cliff. Recently, it's been very popular to tell stories from the bad guy perspective. 
The Broadway musical and novel Wicked tells us the Wicked Witch or Alphaba's story. Similarly with Maleficent, we get another side to the Sleeping Beauty story we all know and love. Whether they are good or evil largely depends on the actions they choose to make. Sometimes if you change the perspective, you might see a whole new world. And speaking of whole new worlds, let's take a look at one of Disney's most hated and well-dressed villains, Jafar from Aladdin. He hypnotizes people, attempted to kill Aladdin, tried to gain phenomenal cosmic powers. 100% total bad guy. Or is he? Is it possible that Jafar is just the misunderstood good guy of Aladdin? 